Welcome back to the Hollow Sky Podcast, a listener experience. We're your hosts. I'm Steven. And Kyle. And if this is the listener experience, you know what that means, Hollow Cult. It's Thursday. And Thursday means we're almost through the work week. You almost got it. It's almost done. You're doing splendid. Couldn't be close enough, man. And we're happy that you chose us to just re- to hit that home stretch, round out that work week. Uh, today's listener experience, we have a Sasquatch encounter, which, I mean, we don't get a whole lot of Sasquatch encounters. We really don't. But not as much as you would think, as far as experiences go. Bigfoot is being extra elusive when it comes to the holocult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, excited to jump into that, but first, we got to get through the business, so check us out at all our social medias, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Discord, Reddit, search up the Hollow Sky Podcast, be part of the community, join the Hollow Cult. it's fun, it's what everyone does, it's just a cool thing to be a part of, and everybody likes to be cool, so if you have an experience that you've experienced that you can't quite like make out what exactly happened and you want us to talk about it on a future show. Kyle's got some info you're going to want. First of all, we need to acknowledge Steve's eloquence on that introduction. That was beautiful. Experience, great, experience, great experienced. <laughs> I don't think I could have worded it any better. Just, I mean, it just rolled off at the all. Tongue, honestly, it was perfect. <laughs> Absolutely. Perfect. Just out here hitting dingers. Dude, all day, every day. <laughs> uh, yeah, if if you want to have the most fulfilling experience of your life, I can tell you how to do that. Maybe not as well as Steve can, but I can. And that would be to write out your encounter for us and then shoot it over to the email, which is going to be hollowskypodcast at gmail.com. And then it'll get turned into its own episode like you're listening to right now and you're going to be stoked. We're going to be stoked. Everybody listening is going to be stoked. It's just going to be perfect. And you're, you're going to feel so relieved and so honored and so joyous (laughs) that you, you'll love us forever. (laughs) You're you're going to, you're going to have a whole new look on life. I'll put it that way. It's exactly Steve speechless now. Yeah, Kyle. I mean, Kyle's right. I just, I don't think there's anything I can add to it. There's really not. No, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep, keep trucking, <laughs> trucking through. Well, if you'd like, <laughs> a- after your your experience gets featured, if you'd like to support the show, there's plenty of ways you can do it. Uh, you can hop over to Patreon for a mere seven dollars a month. You can get all kinds of extra stuff. Future first drop, sh- early drop, early drop shows, ad free shows, extra shows. Um, what else? Uh, casket breaths over there. You can listen to some casket breath tracks and you get coupons to the store. Sometimes whenever we drop coupons, yeah, they're, they're for you guys. Speaking of store, hollowskypodcast.com. Hop on over there. Check out some shirts. Check out some hats. Check out some stickers. There's a bunch of cool shit. Just a cool place to be. Um, also share the show, share the show everywhere you can possibly think of. Everywhere, just if just even if you're not doing anything at all, if you're just sitting in your house, just scream it as loud as you can. All Sky Podcast. Somebody will probably hear. Maybe call the police. I, I, I don't. I know. hope that's a reality. <laughs> I hope that is a reality. I don't know. Um. Also, somebody check out hear, our. Somebody hears it on the 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 police scanner. <laughs> we know. have an individual in a house just screaming. AllSkyPodcast dot com. We have no idea what this means. Or why they're doing it. I feel like that would drive some traffic our way. I'm not opposed to it. So I know somebody out there is interesting enough to pull that one off. Oh, yeah. Still waiting to see that first that first Hollow Sky tattoo. We got that new sigil. We got that new sigil. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm fixing to get it. So I'm thinking about it, too. Just just commit. Just manifest that some. Oh, I'm, de- I'm definitely going to do it. It's going to happen. <laughs> I just got to figure out placement. Right here. Yeah. For those of you listening, that's that's a throat piece. There you um, go. But yeah, yeah, people are going to start crying about how long it's taken to get to the, the experience, but whatever. It's only nine minutes, 27 seconds. <laughs> yeah, and that's including... Actually, not ad. even that. Yeah, not even that, because we recorded before this, so it's not that yeah, bad. It's fine. 
Also, if you want if you want a different Hall Sky experience, then just listen in on your podcast. Start paying attention to the YouTube channel. Kyle, being the fucking man of a thousand hats over here, is now dipping his toes into the video editing process. Hmm. Ultra time consuming. Hmm. Ultra looking, time consuming. But it's looking fly. I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to learn a thing or two here and there. You know, it's it it's a process, but hey, we appreciate. I'm here, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. The Holocult can see our wonderful faces this chatting back and forth. This is true. The ones that don't turn, tune into the night shift live, which you should anyway, but I don't know why you're not. But if you can't, hop into the YouTube. It's gonna it's gonna start getting different. So, yes, shout out Kyle. Popping in all the extra hours, all the extra work, learning how to piece and edit my wonderful face and his wonderful face for all of you to just oogle over. This is true. Let's get in. I I almost sacrificed my computer the other day because it about caught fire when I was (laughs) editing a video. (laughs) Not quite sure why yet, but I'm sure I'll figure it out in the near future. It's too too much handsomeness on one screen. I, I... I didn't think about that, but that's definitely the reason why. <laughs> Speaking of handsome, you know who's handsome as fuck? Sasquatch. Let's dive right in here. How was that for a... That was good. How was that for a lead-in? That was, that was classy. Our listener experience today is brought to us from our friend Andrew. Simply titled, Oregon Sasquatch. Oregon or Oregon? Oregon. Like, uh, Oregon. Not like okay, organ was, harvesting Sasquatch. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I thought. I was like, dang, this is going to be a cool story. <laughs> Andrew says, Hollis guy, guys, I found your podcast from the episode on Confessionals podcast. You guys are great, and I'll be following your podcast from now on. I love the content. The whole Egress Industries mystery has me intrigued. It somewhat reminds me of the whole Cicada 3301 thing from years ago. I have a couple stories I wanted to share with you guys, and feel free to use them with your audience. The UFO one is much better than the potential Sasquatch sighting, so I'll include both. Sasquatch story first. Oh, we got two here. It's a twofer, Holocult. Andrew says, I was working on a property in Southern Oregon. All of these events occurred on or around this property. My partners in the job we were working on were away from the property. I was there alone. Three of us built cabins out there, and when this... When this first thing happened, I was still building my cabin and I was sleeping in my buddy's cabin who was away. People shoot guns a lot out there, so that's not anything out of the ordinary. Three nights in a row, I was woken up by gunshots at like 2.30, maybe 3.30 in the morning. My neighbor's dogs were going crazy and barking nonstop. All nights for several nights. The neighbor that shot the gunshots off would never do that without good reasoning that late at night. I didn't know him well then, but I've got to know him more over the years. After the third night of this waking me up, I grabbed a very high-powered flashlight that I had next to me and I went outside. I was shining it through the woods toward that neighbor's house. The woods are just thick enough that you can hardly see the lights from their house through the woods from my perspective at the cabin. I was kind of annoyed at this waking me up several nights in a row. At this point, I wanted him to see my light like, hey, buddy, what the fuck are you doing? I kind of assumed it was a bear or something around that area. That's why the dogs were going nuts. And he was just shooting warning shots to hopefully scare off whatever predator may be there. As I was shining my light through the woods, a very tall, man-like, jet-black figure walked through my beam of light, which was very much like a spotlight. It was such a powerful flashlight. I honestly can't say for certain if it was a Sasquatch, but after after I tell you what else happened on the property... I think that it probably was and that they were there in that area. The black figure was very tall, but not massive like most people described. It could have been a juvenile or possibly a different type of Sasquatch that isn't as wide or as large as the other ones you hear about. I've heard there are four different types of them, but I honestly don't know. One thing I remember is that this black figure had a very graceful movement about it, a bit floaty. I didn't hear any crunching of sticks or leaves either. It was maybe 50 yards away from me, and just knowing the lay of the land, I really don't think a person would be walking through the woods right there at that time of night, or ever, really. I've had people say that they've seen strange lights up there, but I never had. One guy that was working and one neighbor that was a different neighbor both said they've seen lights up on the mountain on this property. 
One guy even confronted the light, he said, because he thought it was people. And he snuck up on them, and when he got there, the lights, or when he got to where the lights were, they were gone. There was nothing there. That's what he told me anyway. One night up there, I was walking down to the kitchen area, and I saw the craziest yellow eyes I've ever seen in my headlamp right next to my barn. It was small, and sure, it could have been some kind of large cat. I tried to get closer, and this thing would close its eyes and almost instantly be about 30 feet away without making any noise whatsoever. I kept trying to get closer to see what this was and felt like I should have been able to see its body move, but I couldn't. I did that three times before running off into the woods, which I did hear this time. I don't know for sure what this was, but one theory was possibly a juvenile Sasquatch. I thought about that later because that night when I was sleeping, sleeping, I was woken up to something slapping the side of my cabin hard and loud. It like jolted me out of my sleep. I was terrified and grabbed my 45, which is next to me when I sleep out there. The hair on the back of my neck was standing straight up. All I could do was sit there in my bed, which was on the floor at the time, holding my 45 for hours with my back against the wall. I could sense what felt like multiple beings outside of my cabin, and it sounded weird, but it felt like they were also kind of in my head a bit, like somehow in my mind, in an invasive type of way. There was no mind speak or anything like that, but I found it interesting that they happened to be right there after I saw the yellow eyes. Honestly, the yellow eyes seemed to too round looking to be a cat. It would have had to have been a mountain lion or a bobcat if it was. Way too big to have been a house cat, just to clarify. The eyes were big, but low to the ground, maybe two and a half feet high. It wasn't, I wasn't terrified just from being woken up. It was a different type of terrified, something that I had never experienced before. The only other thing that's happened to us there were small stones that have been thrown near us and at us from the side of the cabin or from the side of the kitchen area, and I've heard tree knocks twice. The tree knocks I've heard seem too loud and strong and fast to be human. They were coming from an area of the woods that no one should really be in. I wish my possible Sasquatch sighting was more interesting, but I'm telling you the truth here. I mainly wanted to share my UFO story, because people need to know that these exist too. Both stories are the honest-to-God truth. I hope you share my story, and thanks again for what you're doing. I think many of us know that these things are real and they are part of history that is being intentionally hidden from us. My thoughts on what my Sasquatch is. I think that they are more than just flesh and blood creatures. That is an expert of stealth and a master of its environment. I've heard reports of them turning into and out of balls of light and disappearing immediately. I think they're interdimensional beings with the ability to change their vibration to travel into and out of reality. If the multidimensional theory is true, which I think it is, there are multiple realities or dimensions existing simultaneously on Earth that vibrate at different frequencies, just like octaves of a musical scale or colors of the rainbow. If you change your vibration, you can experience a different dimension or reality. These beings seem to be able to do that. They're also far more advanced than us in terms of telepathy. We have the ability to do some of these things too, but we are super weak compared to these beings. If you think about it, They would be the perfect replacement for humans for life on earth to live in perfect harmony with nature. We are the only ones here messing things up and polluting the environment. Every other being is living in harmony with nature except us. I think we, I think we could, but we are being horribly mismanaged and technologies are being kept from us that would help us live in harmony with nature. As for Sasquatch origins, I think that they have been here for a long time. I've also heard there are other planets with them on it as well. I don't really know if that's true, but anything is possible. There's definitely a cover up being going on. There's definitely a cover up going on with the government. The people are like, oh, why haven't we found any bones or bodies? They have, and that stuff gets covered up. Some of these cryptids could be genetic experiments from top secret programs. Not saying that Sasquatch is, but some of the other strange stuff you hear could be. Anyway, that's all for me right now. Thanks again, Andrew. Well, Andrew, first off, thanks for submitting your Sasquatch story. I thought we were going to get a UFO story, but maybe he sent it in in a different file. That's for another day. I hyped you up, and I got to draw draw you back in a little bit. I'm okay with it because this this is a interesting encounter. I mean, it. Uh, first off, and I'd like to get Steve's obvious opinion on this, but now. 
I kind of feel like it's extremely possible that what you saw to begin with wasn't a Bigfoot. Ah, that's where my brain went. The fact that it's smaller, it was jet black in the light. Little, uh, little ominous there. Now, unless you were insinuating that it had jet black fur, okay, we can, we can, we can go that road. But that wasn't described, so I'm kind of work. Me and Steve are kind of working with uh, what we have, and it almost sounds like some type of shadow entity. And then, f- furthermore, you get into the eyes. The eyes are peculiar. Um, I don't really know what that could be. One thing, though, you, you described it as it's closing its eyes and then it disappears. Is it possible that it was so dark that? The eyes weren't actually closing, but as you got closer, it turned and ran the opposite direction, then turned back around. And then it's weird that you bring up all that information in the end because we just did the law of one and they talk about the thought form. They talk about um, the shining eyes that are familiar with our people. And then furthermore, you say how Bigfoot would be like the perfect replacement. Well, in the law of one, there is a genetic, you know, uh, these things that exist out there as a gene pool that are there to be able to survive radiation and so on and so forth. That's the, the, all the points that hit with me too, as I was reading it, that this, this submission is probably a couple years old, honestly. Like I said, I don't have any way to chronologically keep them because I just grab them and I throw them in a folder. That way we can just pick one and go, pick one and go. Right. Probably not the best way to do it, but it's the way we do it. Especially if he's coming from Tony's show. I mean, that was what, 2021 when he was hit? So that's that's probably pushing three years old if he came directly from that drop of that episode over to us. Maybe maybe a little less than that, but regardless, it's it's probably been in there for a while. And the fact that it lines up so well with the law of one that just dropped last week, this week, actually, but I guess weird. It'd, be, it'd be last week, maybe no this week, whatever, but it is weird that it lines up so perfectly. Um, the first, the first sighting of the tall slender shadow thing does not feel Sasquatch to me. Mm-hmm. Like Kyle said, it feels, it feels something entirely different. It reminded me, of the thing that I saw when we were going through all the weird shit, the tall, like featureless humanoid. Oh, form, gross. Yeah. Peeking through the door. It kind of made me feel like that. Cause he said it was moving and it was floating, but you couldn't hear any movement or any sound, which is, yeah, which normally is not really affiliated with Sasquatch encounters. Sasquatch Not encounters really. always include hearing footsteps, hearing twig breaks, hearing this, hearing that, like that, and usually a smell, yeah, an odor. It's a very whether whether you believe Bigfoot is a flesh and blood creature or a metaphysical creature, usually Sasquatch encounters are a very like physically intense encounter right if yeah. that makes sense like no, they're not like attacking you, but you you get a lot of uh physical um what's the word i'm looking for physical alerts that something's there you hear something in the woods you see something in the woods you know you like hear it breaking branches or you hear it throwing things which further into andrew's story it does happen but i don't i feel like there's some sasquatchy elements here but i also feel like there is something else going on i agree so that first thing does not feel squatchy to me the second one with the glowing eyes and uh, being close to the ground. The first thing I thought of was: Has any had anybody seen the illustration of the encounter where the guy saw the Sasquatch doing the spider crawl? Have you seen that? Shit? I think I think I've seen that. Yeah. Where he's just spread out on his hands and knees, well, on his on his hands and feet, but he's laid down super low to the ground. And apparently they they move like that sometimes. I don't know if it's a stealth maneuver or if it's to throw people off so much. That was the first thing I thought. It's of. terrifying. Was that thing doing a spider crawl and looking up as soon as oh, he drops gross. down? Again, he didn't hear any movement until it made a beeline for the woods. So right. that weird too. That feels like some sort of weird stealthy maneuver. Um, the lights, the orbs. 
are exceptionally common with Sasquatch encounters. You hear that a lot, especially recently. Wherever squatches are, there's usually orbs as well. I don't know. Like in the Law of One, they said they're thought forms, they're energy forms. It could be. It. Could, I, I mean, I don't even know. It could, well, and there's thought forms with with physical attributes as well. Yeah. Like semi-physical attributes. Could these things be... Could could the orbs be, you know, the 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 portals that they're moving through? Could they be residual energy that's left over from them moving through dimensions? Could they be some kind of distraction tactic to keep your eyes off of the Bigfoots? I don't fucking know. It could also be like you 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 know, we can reference the law of one again and countless times throughout history. Whatever those entities are, they they claimed they tried to make contact with us several times. And as they took forms to walk among us, there were like we would reject them at times. You know what I mean? Like they would just come up with a form to try to make contact with us. Yeah. Maybe you think about it. I mean, honestly, out of not that this is the case or not, but out of all the animals in the animal kingdom an ape creature is the most relatable to us. You know what I mean? And how many scientists have worked with apes and tried to do the sign language and and have this rapport with them. And and it's like, it kind of makes sense if you, if you think about it in that regard, we're just like, we're future apes essentially. Right. Further down the road. And the cabin experience was weird. Um, the, the knock on or the banging on the wall is definitely Sasquatch ish. Like Dude, I've I'm, been seeing a lot of those types of encounters here lately. Yeah. Whenever it's it like reminds me of mine, boring. it reminds me of mine. Oh yeah. And then I've seen Heather, like not even Bigfoot related cases where there's this intense pounding on the wall. And I just, it's been popping up in my feeds here lately. And I don't know why, but it's weird. That is weird. And like that, that felt kind of like kind of squatchy to me, kind of uh, territorial. Yeah. Like, hey, you're here. We're here. You know, somebody's going to have to get, get. <laughs> right. But the fact that he said it was inside his head, because you do hear sometimes about um, Bigfoot using, using mind speak and being able to communicate with people that way. But this was more of like a intimidation tactic, the way he described it. Like there wasn't any communication. There was just like something was tapped in and let you know it was tapped in. Like whatever, almost like whatever move you're going to do, like we know. We we know it before you do it. And um, it could have had something to do with the fact that he had a firearm. I listened to a, a weird Sasquatch encounter. It was actually a... a small town monsters documentary they're releasing them like crazy on youtube so definitely go over there and check them out but this man was at a campsite um i think maybe in washington or northern california i can't remember but uh his wife had dropped him off she had to go to work the next day so she went home he was just hanging out by himself and all of a sudden tons of sasquatch activity tons of sasquatch activity and his first thought was, because he had a sidearm and he had a pretty big hunting knife, he um, took his sidearm and set it on the picnic table and took his knife and set it on the picnic table because he's like, I didn't want to pose a threat. He's like, I felt like I was not going to come out on the winning end of that regardless of what I had. So anyway, his night went about as to be expected. Uh, all kinds of noises, all kinds of like stuff hitting his tent and shit. But it kind of made me think about maybe they are in tune with well, whether or not we're armed, whether or not we have weapons. Maybe they're, maybe they're so advanced. Like they do get into our heads and they do know you hear all the time about hunters scoping them in, like have them in the scope and they're just not able to pull the trigger. Think of, yeah. That, that suggests influence to me. Yeah. Same with him. I mean, think about it. If you had, a fire, a firearm on you and a big hunting knife. There's not a whole lot that the normal person is going to be afraid of. Yeah. If it's, if I it's mean, they're, they're going to be afraid, but they're not going to set those objects down. No, no. 
if it if you legitimately think it's a person out there, you're not going to put your weapons down. No, like you like that's. But it was something to the to the effect where he was like, "It's going to be worse if if they know I have these." Which, I mean, all the hunter encounters you hear, they look through their scope and oh, they look so human. I can't do it. But is that really the case? What if they're already? What if there's something already in their head, like fucking with their emotions? Like, like you're not going to do this. Like you, I think that's a great point. I really do. It's I've never thought about it like it like that before, but it makes a whole lot of sense. It's, it's weird, man. It's Definitely weird. weird. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't know the throwing rocks thing at the cabin. Um, that's real squatchy, but I mean, that's also that also could be considered poltergeist activity. Same yeah. with knocking on the walls and shit. It's weird. I don't know. It was a good Bigfoot story though. Like, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. One in a minute. That was good. I was, I, he kind of hyped his UFO story up. So I was like, all right. But once we started getting through the UFO or through the Sasquatch, I'm going to have to look through the file. Well, I mean, if, if, if his UFO, if, if the Bigfoot encounter is lame in comparison to the UFO, UFO story, I'm definitely ready to hear the UFO story. And I'm wondering if the UFO story took place in the same spot, because if it did, that changes a lot of stuff. Yes, sir. So I'll look and possibly the next listener encounter may be a follow up to Andrew's first story if he resubmit or if he submitted the UFO story. I'll go dig in and see what I can find. Um but yeah. Andrew, if you're still listening, we hope you're here. It's been a couple years, I'm assuming. Um Awesome encounter. Do I think I think there is some Sasquatch activity up there, but I don't think that's all you're dealing with because it's it's, it's just it's strange. Uh, but thanks for hanging out with us. Hollow Colt. We're going to wrap her up there. Um, have a good weekend. Congratulations on getting through another work week. You all know how terrible that is. But if you have your own encounter, go back to the beginning of the show. Listen to Kyle. He's got the deets. Send it over. We'll pop it in the file and get to it maybe three years from now. Who knows? We're not good at what we do that well. But thanks for hanging out with us. Till we meet again, stay safe, stay weird, and uh, just try not to let Sasquatch emotionally manipulate you via telepathy.